And have you ever used the names of your pets, family members, street name, or anything like that as a part or whole of one of your passwords over the internet? Hey everyone, to match our nice cyberpunk background, today we're going to be talking about privacy and why it's important. And this video goes over some of the major points that are important to normal people. Obviously, if you are a subscriber to this channel, you understand the importance of privacy, but many of the objections that you'll get in the real world interacting with people with normal day-to-day -day problems that don't have time to think about the potential consequences of Silicon Valley's intrusion into our lives, most of the time people will respond, I don't have anything to hide. There's no reason why I should have to worry about maintaining privacy. Before we get started, I'd like to address the fact that the Pixel 3 finally sold, so I have a little bit more budget to work with for de-googling the next phone. If you are a subscriber, please leave a comment down below regarding the next phone that you would like to see de-googled. I'd like to get your thoughts. With regard to maintaining privacy, I'm going to tune my rhetoric a little bit so that it will resonate a little bit better with the community of generally normal people. And I have three items on my list for this video today. There's a total of seven, but the other four are a little bit less important for people's day-to-day -day lives, and I think the tech community generally understands them instinctively, even if not articulated. The first one is manipulation. Now, a quick show of hands, how many of us have had a friend that could convince us to do stuff that were very much against our best interests frequently? Now, when you think about that friend, think about how much they knew about you and whether or not that person knows as much about you as Google or Facebook. Chances are your response was that Google and Facebook know more about you than that friend. And one of the important things about this is Google and Facebook don't just know more about you, but they know exactly what pushes your buttons. And there could be a number of different axes that they could address persuasion at you. One of the big popular ones out there is neuro-linguistic programming. So on specific topics, people will interact with them more kinesthetically, or which is physical touch, visually, or auditorily. I'm very much an auditory learner, which is why I said that this topic would resonate better with normal people. Because I always talk in auditory terms, I'm going to change the way that I address this in a way that maybe will be more understandable for kinesthetic learners. I used to work with someone when I was working at Best Buy many years ago, and we were all making somewhere between ten dollars and $15,000 a year, just barely scraping by. I was very fortunate to be living at home at the time, so I had a roof over my head. But one of my friends had gone to college and he went to, I think it was DeVry. And DeVry went out of business from what I understand because their degrees weren't very useful. The problem is, is they were charging university level pricing. So he was under complete crushing debt. He had creditors pressuring him all of the time to pay back his college debt that he couldn't afford to make payments on because he wasn't as fortunate as I was, and he had his whole life around him, and just complete creditor harassment and constant pressure. Of course, with college debt, you can't just wipe that away. So he could feel the general constriction of the situation. And if you are a kinesthetic learner, you are more likely to empathize with that story because of all the sensation words, crushing, pressure, harassment, you more likely than I will want to help out in that situation just because of the type of rhetoric that is being used. And Google and Facebook understand that about all of us 
by the way that we type in keyword searches. And that's just one of many axes that they can address things on. Uh, with Google tracking your locations, Apple as well, tracking where you go, they know very much about you, what your interests are, how those interests pair up with general psychological profiles, and they don't even need a person looking at it. They can track all of this information using machine learning, and everything is fed to you automatically for the purposes usually of getting you to buy stuff that you actually don't need, but they have other objectives that they target this marketing at some of which has nothing to do with making money. Some of it is just securing more power. The second topic and the reason why you should be concerned about Silicon Valley and your privacy, and this has to do a lot with the power aspect of the manipulation, is that the Silicon Valley companies want power because they operate in a very similar way to the polluters or the big tobacco companies of the 1960s. To illustrate this, we'll look at two cases. One of them was regulation through seatbelts. And not a lot of people know about this. Most people know of Ralph Nader as the person who spoiled Al Gore's election in 2000. But Ralph Nader was actually very accomplished at saving American lives. What he did was he went through a campaign for about 20 years trying to get safety belts mandated in vehicles because a lot of people died in car accidents. In 1965 he released a book, Unsafe at Any Speed, and continued to pressure Congress to mandate seat belts until that law finally passed in 1984. It saved, I think, 30,000 lives a year. You can fact check me on that. But traffic fatalities, I believe, were at 60,000 and they dropped down to about 30,000. And it just showed the power of what systematic safety rules could do for the general population. But one of the important things that you should note there is that it took him 20 years to do that from a grassroots level. That is a long time, and that is a lot of effort. Now, when they're not doing grassroots stuff, a lot of times they'll do something called astroturfing. And a good example of this was Big Tobacco knew that their cigarettes were killing people, and they knew that regulation was also coming. So what they decided to do was they got involved with Congress, and very rapidly they convinced Congress people to pass regulation to ban the advertising of tobacco products on television. In public, this made the politicians look really strong, like they were going after big tobacco and really showing them what for, showing them that the American people will not stand up for their poisonous products. But at the end of the day, this legislation was backed by big tobacco. And the reason it was backed was because big tobacco was losing their lunch with advertising expenses over television, and they were getting much more profit out of their print advertising in magazines. So they actually got to have the government legally enforce something that they wanted to collude to do almost as a monopoly to begin with, and increased their sales and profit for many years after that legislation was passed. It was astroturfed. It looked like something that was against the corporations, but it was actually for them. Most of the Silicon Valley applications, Facebook, Twitter, not as much Google, affect dopamine in your mind. And I've made other videos on this topic, but basically they behave a lot like drugs and they cause people to act like an addict. But chances are not much is going to be done. And don't get me wrong here, I'm going to be focusing a little bit on California politics. Big tech and big ag, to a lesser extent, really control the state. When you look at the legislation that's passed in Sacramento, you'll see that the California Consumer Protection Act looks like something that would hurt big tech. It requires the deletion of specific 
parts of people's data upon request from the different consumers. But when you actually look at the overall pattern, it doesn't make any sense that any kind of really intense policy was passed. More likely, that law reflects the AstroTurf or the fake give politician credit for doing something that people didn't even really ask for feel to it, specifically because the politicians that passed CCPA were the very candidates whose campaigns were largely funded off of tech millionaires and billionaires. Again, when we look at the federal level, Silicon Valley has enough control that they can do something very similar, of course, on the federal level, the tech giants will fund a lot of really important Republicans to make sure that nothing gets passed on that side of the aisle, besides the fact that Republicans tend to be averse to regulation anyway. I don't expect anything to be really done about big tech's problems with privacy and mishandling of data, handing it out to whoever. I don't know who they're handing my data to and in what form they're handing it to different people until something really, really bad happens, like the industrial boom in the 1960s where lakes caught on fire, until something like that happens, until there's a major data breach that really hurts people, I don't expect anyone at any level of government to do anything about the tech companies and making sure that data is properly stored and private. Which leads me into the third point, and that is the risk of data breach. In 2017, Equifax breached the private information, social security numbers, basically everything you'd need for identity theft for about half of all Americans. And that data breach cost Equifax a ton of money. The problem is, is when you have a handful of small players you start to get into the bigger they are, the harder they fall type scenarios. Because everything is centralized, there is a very, very, very large target on these companies' backs. To illustrate this, sometimes you'll go into Google Documents or Google Spreadsheets, and you may not have seen this, but I have personally. You'll see an anonymous animal in your file. It'll be something like Curious Cat or ready rhino and they'll be right up in the top right hand corner of your screen and what that is is a google employee most likely that has accessed your file that means that your documents on the back end are not actually encrypted it means that google has full access if you trust google that's fine what happens when a russian chinese or Romanian hacker, or just some random criminal syndicate from the United States gets access into Google. They're a very large company. Someone is trying to hack them 24-7. When that person gets in there, they get access to all of your files. Have you ever stored a tax document in Google? In your Facebook account, have you listed the names of your pets or your family members? And have you ever used the names of your pets, family members, street name, or anything like that as a part or whole of one of your passwords over the internet? Can you say for sure that you have updated that password so that no one who has access will steal your information? As you think about that, remember, you do have something to hide. Someone can steal every penny out of your bank account if there is a data breach at Google and Facebook. And given their lack of general transparency, what makes you think that they won't cover up a data breach in the same way that Big Tobacco covered up the fact that their products were killing people? You know it in your heart of hearts that Facebook and Google will kill you to save a buck, just like Big Tobacco. So if you were one of those people 
that started looking really seriously at Mac products after the series of hacks that Microsoft experienced in the early 2000s or the complete fiasco that Microsoft had with Windows Vista. You should be looking now. When you reacted to that situation with Microsoft being such a big company, getting hacked because they had the big target on their back, you were closing the sliding glass door after your border collie was halfway down the street. That reaction was too little, too late. Right now, the red flags are out there. Google Chrome is having what we call zero-day exploits all the time because they're the largest browser, by far the largest browser. So they have this huge target painted on their back. In fact, Google Chrome is such a security liability to Google that Google actually gives money to their biggest competitor, which is Firefox. And I'm guessing that the reason why they donate that money is to help take some of the heat off of their product because it will fail if it becomes the primary browser. So remember to take control of your privacy. Do some steps to mitigate these risks. Your information could get stolen and Google and Facebook will not be the ones holding the bag. If your neighbor's information gets stolen, the people who are going to pay for it, it's going to be you. That's who it's going to be. It's going to be you and me and everyone else because we're going to collectivize the cost of the failure while continuing to allow the profits to be privatized into these tech giants that do not have our best interests at heart. So I hope that you found this informative. I hope this does speak to a broader audience as far as why it's important to maintain your privacy. And if you are a normal channel subscriber and you found this useful, please feel free to use these points in discussions. If you want to share this video, go ahead. And if you are a subscriber, I'd like to give a shout out to my brother channel from Ireland. And this is Owen Coogan. And I'll put the spelling up on the screen because for those of us in the United States, Owen is spelled a little bit different. He covers a lot of very similar topics. And we've been communicating a little bit back and forth in the comments. Generally, we think of the same video things that we want to cover. So there's a little bit of difficulty there where I, sometimes I'll have a video topic that he will post a video for it within a couple of days. Or one of the things that he noticed lately is he was going to do a video on Calyx OS, which is an Android version that is security focused and came over to my channel and realized that I was doing a lot of custom ROM in installs. So if you liked what you saw today, please leave a thumbs up. If you want to see a video about a degoogling phone, please leave that information down in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick signing out.